two aspects here. Firstly, just the sheer incompetence of opening an office and then closing it within four days. But also, bearing in mind international growth of things like Twitter, why would you close your Africa office? It could be a change of strategy, Richard. Twitter's former CEO, Jack Dorsey, was a big fan and advocate of the African office. In fact, in 2020, he initially said he was considering spending three to six months in Africa. But the employees that work in the Twitter Ghana office feel insulted, discriminated against, disrespected in the way this has been handled. They received a termination notice on, thir on Friday morning, just four days after the physical location opened. They'd been working remotely for about a year. Many of them had moved from other countries, Nigeria and others, to be in Ghana for this dream job. This is the notice they received. It didn't address them by name. It just said, see attached. And the letter says, I want to read a part of this for you. The company is reorganizing its operations as a result of a need to reduce costs. It is with regret that we're rushing to inform you that your employment is terminating as a result of this exercise. Your last day of employment will be on 4th December. You will be placed on garden leave until your termination date. And here's the inconsistency here, which is grating on these Twitter employees. This tweet from Elon Musk, he said, everyone exited was offered three months of severance, which is 50% more than is legally required. But these employees in the Africa office say they didn't get that. They were not offered next steps or any severance at all, so they're out in limbo. The, the unfairness of the way it's being handled, I'm guessing there's nothing they can do about it. They are consult consulting with employment lawyers in Ghana. They point out that Elon Musk is an African. He was born here in South Africa, in Pretoria, which is about 30 miles from here. They thought that he would treat them with a bit more respect, and they're just asking for the right thing to be done. Same with what's happening to other employees who are leaving the company in Europe and North America. They don't feel so. And so they think it's extra stinging that this has happened to the African team who have been a small, close-knit team, less than 20 people, and they think this is a drop in the ocean for the world's richest man. They, it just doesn't make sense for them. Larry, thank you. In Johannesburg tonight, gratefully stayed at Breakfast.